Hi, hello, namaste. My name is Arpita Banerjee, and in this channel of Arpita Classes, you are watching the lecture series of Maharashtra Board 12th Standard Chemistry, and the name of the chapter is Halogen Derivatives. This is part five of the same chapter, and today we are going to continue with the chemical properties of halogen derivatives. Let's start. The second chemical property today we are going to discuss, and the name of the chemical property is elimination reaction. or it is dehydrohalogenation first we'll understand the meaning of dehydrohalogenation so i'm writing here d means removal d means removal hydro for hydrogen and dehydrohalogenation this is dehydro halogenation sorry this one will be dehydro halogenation so d means removal hydro means hydrogen and halogen means you know x so here removal of hx will be taking place how this removal of hx will be taking place this is your the here where the br is attached the functional group is attached that carbon is called as alpha carbon and this the adjacent carbon is called as beta carbon so from the beta carbon hydrogen will be coming out and from the alpha carbon br will be coming out so it will be looking like this somewhat this is your ethyl bromide i am writing the full structure open structure of ethyl bromide so this is your ethyl bromide now this is alpha carbon this is beta carbon from the beta carbon the hydrogen will come out and from the alpha carbon the br will come out so these two bonds will combine together to give a double bond over there so the product will be here c h h double bond c h h so the main product, product we can see here is the ethene molecule is the main product now the br which has come out that will be reacting with the k over here so that will give you k br when br has come out and one hydrogen has come out that hydrogen will react with the oh part to give you h2o the important part here to remember is the koh has to be alcoholic koh we have done in the first uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction we have taken a reagent that is aqueous koh if we take aqueous koh the product has to be alcohol and if we take alcoholic koh the product will be uh, the dehydrohalogenated product i hope everybody understood we'll see the next example this one i'll just write down the example again here let me take above so that you understand nicely so i'm writing the uh, open structure of this okay i'll show it to you so this is your Uh, alpha carbon this is the beta carbon and this is the beta carbon so you need to remember that alpha from the alpha carbon the br will come out and from the beta carbon the hydrogen will come out now since these two beta hydrogens are the same type of hydrogens so you can take out hydrogen from either of the side okay either this side or this side so if it comes out from here here the double bond will come so we'll get ch3 ch double bond ch2 the name of this compound is propene so we get propene here and other the by products are kbr plus h2o the br which is coming out this br will be reacting with the potassium to give you kbr and the hydrogen which is coming out i'll show you the hydrogen like this the hydrogen which is coming out that will react with the oh part to give you water so this is happening like this same thing we'll see here this reaction this is your alpha carbon this is beta carbon beta carbon and beta carbon all these beta carbons are same type so for only one beta carbon you can choose and you can take out the hydrogen from there so i'm choosing this beta carbon so it is ch3 c ch3 and here there will be a double bond ch2 the by products are kbr plus h2o and the name of this compound is 1 2 and 3 this is 2 methyl propene okay so we get 2 methyl propene so this is the reaction 
we'll see the next page uh, here we have to on regard to this reaction we have to study one rule which is called a Seidzeff rule which says that in dehydrohalogenation or this is also called as dehydration the preferred alkene the alkene which will be prepared is that alkene which contains greater number of alkyl groups across the carbon-carbon double bond. This is a rule which you have to remember the same way, the way it is written. Okay, so here it is, this, in this reaction, the preferred alkene will be that alkene which contains greater number of alkyl groups across the CC double bond. Now, what does it mean? Suppose I take this example. This is your secondary butyl bromide. Okay, this compound is called as secondary butyl bromide. Now here I can see this is my alpha carbon, this is my beta carbon, and this is also my beta carbon. Now these two beta hydrogens are not same type. If hydrogen gets removed from here, you get one butene and if it gets removed from here, you get two butene. So if I remove from here, suppose I'm writing uh I'll show you this one properly. This is CH2 and suppose I'm writing 1H over here. I'm removing the hydrogen from here and Br from here. So this side there will be a double bond. So the first compound I get is CH2 double bond CH, CH2 and CH3. This is but 1E. This is my first compound plus. If I remove the hydrogen from here now. Okay, so now I'll just write it the same way, CH3 only. This is CH3 and this side I'm writing the H like this, CH2, H like this and removing this one. So here the double bond will come. So the second product which we get is CH3, CH double bond, CH and CH3. This is but 2 in. Now which one, when we get two different products, which one will be the major one? That depends on this rule. Now see, this is carbon-carbon double bond. Now across this carbon-carbon double bond, that side there are two, uh, two carbons and this side there is no carbon. And here in carbon-carbon, this is a carbon-carbon double bond. Across this, this side also one alkyl group, that side also one alkyl group. So the major product will be the the, this product, okay. This alkene will be the major product according to Saint's rate rule. So this will be the major product, and this will be the minor product. Now the fourth reaction is action of active metals. Here, uh, the first reaction will be action with magnesium. So I've taken an alkyl halide. This is my alkyl halide, and this is reacting with magnesium, okay, in presence of dry ether. So this is the condition of the reaction. What happens is magnesium has two valencies. So how it will fulfill its two valency is magnesium will be coming in between R and X. So we will get a compound like RMGX. Now here we see that magnesium is much more electropositive than carbon. So this will be getting a very small amount of positive charge and carbon will be getting a very small amount of negative charge. Okay. So this is basically this is a uh, compound you can say in organic chemistry where carbon gets a negative charge. In all other compounds you can say carbon is positive. Even in alkyl halide you see this is electronegative and this is electropositive. So carbon gets a positive charge. This is a compound where carbon gets a negative charge. Okay. Now in the next step if we take the uh, this one this, acid, this, is, this is called as alkyl alkyl magnesium halide. The name of this compound is alkyl magnesium halide. See this is for alkyl, R for alkyl, magnesium and this for halide. Now in the next step we are taking the alkyl magnesium halide okay and we are reacting this with water. This is very very reactive compound. Alkyl magnesium halide is very very reactive compound. If we do this reaction this R and this H will combine together to give you alkene and the other product will be magnesium OH here and X here. MgX was already there, OH will get connected over there, okay? So this is basically negative and this is positive and here this is positive and this is negative. So the positive part will go with the negative one and the negative part will go with the positive one. So we get this one. This is nothing but alkane. So we get alkane over here. We'll see the next example. This is methyl bromide. The compound's name is methyl bromide reacting with magnesium in presence of dry ether. So first we will get CH3 
MgBr. The name of this compound is methyl magnesium bromide, which is my. This is also called as Grignard reagent. Always remember this RNGX is also known as Grignard. Grignard's reagent. This is more famous as Grignard's reagent. Okay. So now this Grignard reagent in the second stage react with the water. So this negative part of Grignard reagent will go to the positive part with water and we get methane over here and the other compound is MgOH and Br. MgOH Br. Magnesium hydroxy bromide. Come here. This is my ethyl bromide. This is ethyl bromide reacting with magnesium in presence of dry ether we get ethyl ch3 ch2 magnesium bromide so the name of this compound is ethyl magnesium bromide now in the next step we get ethyl magnesium bromide reacts with water so we get ethane CH3, CH3, that's ethane plus Mg, OH, Br. So here the product is ethane. Okay. So this is a reaction with alkyl halide with magnesium metal. Note one more thing that is Grignard reagent is an organometallic compound. This is called as an organometallic compound and it is highly reactive. This question can come in MCQ. Why this is called as organometallic compound? Because see, this is your Grignard reagent GR. Okay? Now this is formed by the organic compound Rx. Rx is what? Organic compound and Mg is what? Magnesium, that is metal. Okay? So if you combine these two, we get a organometallic compound. Okay, so this is very very reactive that you need to remember. Now we will go to the move on to the next question that is the uh, reaction under reaction with metals we have the reaction with sodium metal and this reaction is called as verge coupling reaction. Very very important. So here we have taken an alkyl halide. This is an alkyl halide. This is sodium metal and this is the same alkyl halide only. We have written it in a different way. We just wrote it this way. This is Rx, this is Rx, same alkyl alloy. We'll take two atoms of sodium and we'll take out this two NaX because we know that sodium alkyl metals are having a lot of affinity towards the halogen. So it will take the halogen along with it and the rest of the part R and R will couple together. So that is why this is called as coupling reaction. So this is R, R and NaX. R and R is nothing but alkene. So we get alkene in this reaction. Take the example, this is methyl bromide, methyl bromide, sodium atom and again this is methyl bromide. Okay, now when we react this with two atoms of sodium, two NaBr comes out and we get CH3, CH3 plus 2 NaBr. This CH3, CH3 is nothing but it is called as ethane. Okay, now this reaction we can write this way also. Two molecules of CH3Br, methyl bromide. So two molecules of CH3Br are taking this way and two atoms of sodium. If they give you this way and here they are giving dry ether, dry ether is a solvent. So understand that this is coupling reaction and you just double this CH3 part. Okay, this two CH3 can be written as CH3, CH3 that's ethane plus 2 NaBr. So the reaction can be given like this also. It is the same reaction, understand. This is nothing but ethyl bromide. Ethyl bromide. Another molecule of ethyl bromide. Here I put 2 and then I take out 2 NaBr. So I get the ethyl part will get double. So CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3 plus 2 NaBr. This is which alkene? This is an alkene with four carbon atoms which is called as butane. So this is a product. So here you can see, see that this reaction is a synthesis reaction. I mean the number of carbon atoms is increasing over here. You are starting with two carbon atoms with high provide the substrate and you are getting a product butane. That is it is a carbon-carbon synthesis step up reaction you can say. Okay. Come here. This is a note. If you take two different alkyl halide. This is an alkyl halide. Rx. Okay. And what if we take another alkyl halide is R-6, then what will happen? 
First of all, RX and RX will combine with sodium. It will be self-verge reaction and it will give you R and R, R, R. Another one is this R dash 6 and R dash 6 will combine with itself to give you R dash and R dash. This is another alkyl. Plus this RX and this R dash 6 will combine with sodium to give you R, R dash. And the byproduct will be NaX. So there will be different alkenes in this case. Okay. Let us take this example. This is your methyl bromide. Methyl bromide. And this is your ethyl bromide. Two different alkyl halide we have taken in presence of sodium and dry ether. First methyl bromide and methyl bromide will couple together. That is we are going to get CH3CHD that is ethane. So the first product will be ethane in this case. Okay. Another thing is this ethyl bromide will combine with ethyl bromide to give you another alkene that is C2H5. C2H5. This is nothing but butane. The other possibility is methyl bromide and ethyl bromide will combine together to give you CH3, C2H5. This is nothing but propane and the byproduct will be as always it is NaBr. So this is the reaction when the first reaction you do in presence of two different alkyl halide. Okay? Same thing here you see this is your ethyl bromide. C2H5Br which is your ethyl bromide and this is your propyl bromide. Two different alkyl halide again I have taken in presence of sodium and dry ether. First this will couple together. So I will get a butane C4H10. Then C3H7 will couple together. So I will get a hexane C6H14 plus Ethyl and propyl will combine together to give you pentane C5H12. H C5H12 plus other product is 2NaBr. Okay, so uh, here we are getting a mixture of alkanes. So the uh, this type of uh, Welch reaction when you take to different alkyl halide is not of very importance. I mean the importance is less because we get a mixture of alkanes. And uh, our desired alkene, the yield of desired alkene will be less first of all. Another thing is there is difficulty to separate the alkenes because they have, they differ by very uh, small amount in their physical quantity. So this uh, uh, is not a very suitable method for the preparation of alkene. So methane, another important uh, thing is methane cannot be prepared by Birch reaction. This is another important thing. Methane cannot be prepared by Birch reaction. So today we have completed two reactions. The, second, uh, the first one is dehydrohalogenation reaction which happens in presence of alcoholic UH and the second reaction is reactions with metals and here we have covered two metals that is one is magnesium, one reaction is magnesium plus alkyl halide and the other reaction is uh, sodium plus alkyl halide which is also called, called as Birch uh, coupling reaction. In the next lecture we are going to come with the mechanism of the reactions and there we are going to study two very important mechanisms that is SN1 and SN2. We will see the details of the mechanism, the differences between the two uh, uh, reactions and uh, yeah, so that's it. So today we will stop the video here. If you find these videos are beneficial to you, please subscribe to the channel and press the like button. Thank you so much. Stay tuned.